Warm greetings. I am Sayak Sundar Das, an undergraduate in the School of Economics at Prevention University, and I'm here to speak on the topic postmortem of politics. To begin with, any discussion about politics in India is a rather difficult task. Not because of the intricacy of the system, but because politics is often viewed as an exclusive club and a person must keep away from it if he is doing well in life. We have often heard people say that politics is only reserved for the wealthy people who hold their voters' allegiance or the semi-literate people who have got nothing to lose in life. But while saying so, we are conveniently ignoring a relevant section of the population, that is, the educated professional class. However, the Indian society is so competitive that a salaried middle class person can rarely afford to take the risks implied in a political life. Nonetheless. His views are important in deciding the political agenda of the country. But we seem to have conveniently ignored this, and the political agenda of the country is largely dictated by a political party. Now the problem with this is, a political party rarely evolves its ideologies or ambitions with time, and this directly affects its political agenda. Now the people of India have accepted it as a fait accompli that a single ideology is synonymous with a single party and it can never be changed. That apart, we see an embarrassing stratification in the Indian society where all the money floats at the top, but all the votes lie at the bottom. Political schemes try to appease these two sections and the sandwiched middle class is ignored. Agenda apart, there is this constant struggle to remain in power. Different elections in states on a rolling basis means that a new election is never very far and the constant attention drawn towards it along with short-run expediencies shadows any long-term commitments. Different-minded people in a party or unviable coalitions being formed just to win a majority hampers any developmental work. At the same time, a single party with no pluralistic views lacks a democratic character. But despite this, such parties form governments. Because politics in India is not all science, but an equal measure of emotions. Be it Indira Gandhi being called Durga or Narendra Modi as the saviour of India, Indian masses love hero worship and the gestures thereof. No wonder that they distracted themselves from the pandemic by banging utensils and excused their finance minister when she tried to blame economic downfall on God. Now these politicians can get away with this lack of accountability because their voters are politically unaware. Ironically, to hold a political position in this country, there is no necessary minimum academic qualification. So this might mean that a politician may turn out to be as ignorant as his voter. Now they further distract their voters by resorting to short-term appeasement schemes. For example, a government is willing to give direct money transfers or subsidies to farmers or labourers, but is unwilling to make any long-term measures to develop the infrastructure for agriculture or employment. Now, beneficiaries do not understand that this only drains public wealth without any positive effect on public sector development. So, all these issues are very visible to us. But these have always been pushed aside and issues such as party expansionism, income generation and public appeasement have been taken up by political parties. So lastly, people who say that they are not interested in politics must understand that unless socially relevant and politically aware people come into the fray, politics will always be viewed as a poorly dealt gamble. Thank you.